Today we're going to be comparing two of the best built ultra compact travel strollers on the current market, in my opinion, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo and the Alpha Baby Menu. The Baby Zen Yo-Yo, now in its second iteration, has long been king of the hill. A remarkable feat considering that it was also the model to invent the concept of the ultra compact travel stroller in the first place, which I would define as a stroller which folds down small enough to be used as carry-on luggage on airplanes. We're only a few years shy of a decade now since the original launch of the Yo-Yo, and in that time, a lot of competing brands have built models to try and grab a piece of Baby Zen's market share. Most of them have failed to build anything even remotely as capable as the Yo-Yo, but looking at what's come out in the last couple of years, Baby Zen's top spot might be at risk. These days, virtually all of the larger brands are adding ultra-compact models to their lines, a trend I expect to continue. And now that the big boys are starting to play, the quality level is rising quickly. Let's kick off this comparison with a few stats. The Yo-Yo clocks in at 6.2 kilos versus 6.7 on the Minu, and it folds down to 52 by 44 by 18 centimeters versus the Minu's 52 by 29 by 58. Both of these strollers claim weight capacities here in Europe as dictated by EU safety regulations, meaning 15 kilos in the seat and five kilos in the shopping basket. But as can be seen when sold elsewhere in the world, the true weight capacities of both of these strollers is actually higher. Suffice it to say that unless you're planning on using these strollers to transport lead weights or something, either is sufficiently sturdy to fit the average person's needs. We'll talk a bit about comfort now for both you and your child before moving on to the mechanics of these models. Though the width of the seats are identical at the front edge, the rest of the menu seat is larger due to a longer seat back and deeper baseboard and higher canopy providing a tad more coverage. When it comes to reclining the seat, the Zen has a slightly lower recline, but the deeper base and gentle curve at the front of the seat give the menu a slight edge in comfort with younger children whose legs are not yet long enough to reach the footrest. The textiles on both of these models are more or less equally padded and equally easy to remove for a wash. But when it comes to the canopy, the Minu again has a slight edge in quality due to being double layered and including a UV protection sun flap. When it comes to your own comfort while using the stroller, both of these models are remarkably easy to fold and unfold, with the Minu having a slight edge on folding down since it is one step versus two on the Zen. Both models have built-in carry straps, which in my mind should come standard on all ultra compacts, and both models also include travel bags. The Minu is a bit bulkier when folded in comparison to the Zen, and is thus more awkward to lug around, something which should be considered if you're on the short side. When it comes to drivability, both of these models are decent for ultra compacts, but the Minu has a definite edge with its well above average size wheels and substantial rear suspension, which is actually so good that it's better than many full size strollers. But we'll talk more about that in a moment when discussing the mechanics of these models. Let's start off the mechanics section by taking a look at the folding setup on both models. My favorite part about Up and Baby strollers in general is usually their folding systems. And the reason for this is that you use a lot of high quality uh, metal setups in their folding systems. They really don't mess around when it comes to the folding systems, which makes for very rigid and very stable chassis that have a tendency not to break in the long run. So the way the folding system works on the Up and Baby menu is it has this uh, little safety slider and a button. And that is going to unlock the joint here, which is really the only locking point on the entire chassis. The rest are all hinges, but they're hinges that are put together in such a way that it takes a long time before they start to uh, loosen. Of course, unless you are uh, kind of abusing the stroller with too much weight on very, very uneven terrain. Uh, it does have a certain degree of light terrain capability, but it is still an ultra compact stroller. But barring that fact, you tend not to get a lot of looseness in the overall structure of the chassis, even though the only locking point is here. And the way the locking point actually works is that when you depress that uh, button, it pulls a very thin, flat uh, metal rectangle out of here, uh, that protrudes out from here, uh, out of a well here. And that even though we're dealing with very small parts, since all of this is metal, and since the pressure pushes down from the top or the bottom onto that rectangular design, uh, it's actually quite sturdy because you get the entire thickness or depth of that rectangle uh, in relation to the uh, way the kinetic energy moves its way up through the whole stroller and then impacts that locking mechanism. So even though the menu is relatively new, I do not anticipate seeing a lot of problems with the, either the locking mechanism or sort of a general looseness in the overall chassis, uh, judging from how the Vista and the Cruise have performed uh, having relatively similar systems. The Baby Zen Yo-Yo has a two-step fold uh, versus the Minus One, as I mentioned, but the top portion of this fold is just to release the handle and the canopy and allow it to fold down. 
The real magic of the folding system occurs under the stroller, which is a little bit hard to see. If you'd like to look at how the actual, actual mechanism works, then watch the other video we uh, put out recently, which is the Baby Zen Yo-Yo versus the Silver Cross Jet. We'll give you a, a little bit of a look at how that looks underneath. But essentially what's happening is there is a very sturdy locking mechanism in the center that is handle activated. And when you pull on it, all of the uh, various hinged points on the stroller then fold towards each other. Now, the points uh, here are not quite as tight as they are on the Minion. They are all screwed together, so when they loosen, it is possible to tighten them up by screwing in a little bit, but still, um, over time, also given that it doesn't have the shock absorption or the larger wheels of the Minion, you can sometimes develop a, a certain looseness in the chassis overall. It's not very bad. The Baby Zen Yo-Yo is a very well-constructed uh, stroller, uh, but it does have a little bit more looseness than the Minion. You also, though, won't see any real breaking of the uh, folding apparatus on the Baby Zen Yo-Yo. And unlike the Minion, which just came out, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo has been around now for seven years, going on eight years, and uh, I have never seen any sort of uh, actual breakage when it comes to any of the folding components on the stroller itself. Okay, we're going to take a little bit of a closer look at the lower rear frame of both of these strollers. Uh, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo does not have a rear frame suspension, which is actually quite uncommon for an ultra-compact travel stroller, uh, simply because you're mostly going to be using it in airports and malls and sort of well-paved environments. Um, it has slightly smaller back wheels than the Minu. It's a pretty standard size for ultra compacts, but it is smaller than on the Minu. Uh, when we look then over at the Minu in relation to the wheels and the suspension, it does have this really large, nice suspension unit on the back, and it does have the larger wheels, uh, which I would say are slightly higher in quality in terms of uh, like the thickness and the way it's all put together. Uh, what this means for the Minu is that it's really going to overperform all other ultra compacts. When you get out of the airport and you're at your holiday destination, you wanna take your stroller on the beach or over cobblestones or a little bit more rougher terrain, it will actually handle it a lot better than the Baby Zen Yo-Yo or a lot of the competition. Uh, that's quite nice and it's, uh, I would say, a chief selling point for the menu itself. Uh, looking on the back frame then with the brake system, the Baby Zen Yo-Yo has a simpler brake system, which I actually like a lot better. It's just a bar that rotates inside and locks the wheels in place. Uh, on the menu, they have gone for a wire-based brake system uh, with this like two-pedal flip-flop friendly brake system, as they like to call it, so that you never have to push up with your toes. Um, the wire does not have an adjustment screw. It is possible then that over time you're going to develop problems where the wire might need to be replaced. It is possible to unscrew the brake system and remove the wire if this occurs. Uh, overall, I'm not as big a fan of wire-based systems because uh, they do tend to rust or um, be affected a lot more by the inner environment of the brake system with sand and sort of stuff than you have with just a purely mechanical, simple rotating bar system like you have on the Baby Zen Yo-Yo. Okay, we'll take a little bit of a closer look then at the front frame of both of these strollers. Um, the Minu does have slightly larger front wheels as well by about half an inch. Uh, front wheel size is actually more important than back wheel size in my opinion uh, because it's what gets you over the terrain uh, before suspension starts to kick in and protect the uh, stroller against the vibrations. So every inch, every half an inch does count. Not that the Baby Zen Yo-Yo has small front wheels. Uh, they are large in relation to the rest of the market as well. Large standard. Uh, both of these strollers have that very standardized uh, front frame suspension. It's built into the front frames of, um, or front forks of virtually all uh, swivel wheel models these days. And uh, neither of these models has a swivel lock. Uh, swivel lock is what uh, locks the wheel so that it faces forward. And uh, this is really mostly important for strollers where the uh, connection between the fork and the front uh, frame housing is sort of bad. And, uh, and weak and over time allows wear to uh, cause wobbling problems. Now, you actually don't really, I don't really see that occurring with the Minu. I know this doesn't occur with the Zen because it's been around for so long. Uh, both of these are actually really well engineered in relation to how that axle locks into the fork. The Baby Zen front wheels uh, are not removable, uh, not without a lot of effort anyway. Uh, they're put in very tightly with wave washers and locking washers so that this connection point does not uh, is not really as susceptible to the wear that would cause wobbling problems. While on the menu, you actually can remove the front wheels, but uh, it's actually held in place in two points. If you watch a review, you'll see me explain this a bit better, but it uh, locks at the top and it also plugs in at the bottom so that that axle can't really move around and cause wobbling problems in the long run. Uh, 
Uh, overall then, the front frame of both of these is very well engineered and designed um, with longevity in mind, so as uh, to prevent against wear that would cause driving problems uh, down the road. So which of these is better? In all honesty, just in terms of using these two strollers, I feel I have to give the edge to the Epa Baby Minu. Even though the Yo-Yo is incredibly well engineered, the Minu is sturdier, more drivable, and has a more luxurious seat. But don't turn off the video yet because we're about to reveal the Minu's dirty secret. It's not actually an ultra compact travel stroller. Despite being advertised as such, the Minu is not actually small enough to fit within standard carry-on luggage guidelines when folded. In fact, I haven't found a single airline that advertises dimensions large enough for it. This doesn't mean it won't actually fit in most overhead compartments. From the research I've done, I'm actually pretty sure it will. But this also doesn't mean that the airline attendants will necessarily let you get on the plane to prove it. So it's up to you then if potential travel hassles are worth its increased performance. Unfortunately though, in the still ongoing search for an ultra compact that beats the yo-yo at its own game, we judge the menu as unfortunately disqualified from the competition for those performance enhancing extra few centimeters. We hope you found this video interesting, and if you have, we ask that you subscribe, as it helps us continue making videos in the future. Thank you.